week one, no matter what you're invested in to get to a lifestyle change at the end of this next 12 weeks, I want to impart to you a gentle but sustainable way to make a lifestyle change. Usually when I have anybody get into the anti-inflammatory lifestyle, it's going to be inclusive or at least it's going to cover thinking, eating, and activity. And I'll put a link here on my previous videos that I talk about those concepts. But the objective, because most Americans uh, are lacking on all three, is to slowly get into this over the next 12 weeks and not just dive in 110%. I have no problems with the enthusiasm of making a lifestyle change, but in most of the studies I've read, if you aggressively go into a lifestyle change and go cold turkey, the likelihood of failure is high. Sustainability is low. So what I want to do is, over the course of 12 weeks, slowly but steadily try to imbibe these small changes into your life. The first thing is always the easiest, and that's always to try to clear the cupboards of that food, that comfort food that we always go to. It's way too easy to go to the grocery, especially in the aisles, and not shop the periphery for packaged, for canned, for boxed foods. Uh, those are typically the ones that have high carbohydrates, have high um, empty calories. Those are also the ones that satiate or give us a good feeling at, right after we eat them. Uh, but also give us a bad feeling about a two, a two or three hours later. There is something called the glycemic index, and uh, I'll, I'll explain that in this video here, but there's a glycemic index that gives us satiety, gives us a sense of pleasure when we take advantage of those foods that have high glycemic index. But as you'll see in the graphs in my video, uh, anything that has a high glycemic index will usually fall just as fast and make us want the same food or hunt for more food later. The idea is to go with a low glycemic index food that slowly releases and slowly goes away so that we have satiety and not have that hunger hunting later on. So we'll learn about that over the next 12 weeks. But most important is, especially my folks that work at night, how it's too often that I get home after a night shift and I feel so hungry. And the easiest thing to do when everybody else is asleep and there's dinner out, even if I just ate before coming back, I'll indulge in the dinner, turn on the TV and just sit there and keep on with snack foods. Or if there's no dinner out, and I would usually say for those of you who have spouses that prepare dinners, tell the spouse to put away the dinner and make sure that you have something before you leave your work site. Something that has a little bit of fiber that's healthy, fruit, vegetable, or a sandwich. Uh, maybe my su suggestions for MREs or meals ready to eat before you leave the work site, no matter how long it takes you to get home, an hour versus 15 minutes. If you eat in anticipation that you're going to be finishing work and driving home, then you won't be so famished when you get home. So the objective, again, would be to eat before you leave, but also to clear the dinner table of any leftovers from dinner that night. Also, if you open up your cupboard and you see a whole bunch of fatty foods, box foods, packaged foods, candies, I would suggest you get rid of them. You get rid of them and cold turkey, throw that stuff in the garbage. I always think there's something that's important to have in the cupboards, especially for the kids. If they're not into the major changes of the next 12 weeks, then give them something, but um, try not to make it your favorite one, because you will always go to that. You'll probably not stop eating it, and then you'll have to refill that the next day. If you can, throw out the majority of your uh, your your comfort foods, and then perhaps make something available in the fridge. Something in a fruit, vegetable, something that's easy to get. If you kind of clean off grapes, even if the grapes aren't in season, I still think it's a better than eating a packaged food. So you can clean off the grapes. If you have avocado that's ready, if you have uh, dried nuts, if you have dried fruit, yes, fruit usually has more carbohydrate load than vegetables, but again, the objective is during this first couple weeks to substitute good, good bad foods for bad bad foods. So uh, in this case, fruits would be fine. Uh, you, go, you can usually go to your local Jewel, your Dominic's, or they close down, but uh, 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 Fruitful Yield, uh, Whole Foods, Mariano's, and find some pretty decent stuff that might be imported, and it might have been picked before its ripened uh, date, but it's still better than packaged stuff. You get enough of that stuff when you are hungry and you do hunt for foods. If you've been stuck in traffic or you had a bad night, 
then at least you'll go for those easy to reach ones and you'll be somewhat happy and then go to sleep uh, at least full of healthy foods. So uh, that's the first thing. Clear out the cupboard, uh, just throw it away, leave a couple of little package stuff things for your kids, maybe your husband, but try to get rid of those things that you know are your uh, craving foods. Stock the fridge with, go to your local grocery store this before this first week and stock the fridge with something that'll last a week, something that's healthy when it's edible. Even if it's wheat toast, whole grain toast, and you toast three pieces of toast, you have olive oil, a little bit of cayenne pepper, uh, garlic, uh, fresh or powdered, and you use that as your snack before you sleep. In Ayurveda, it's not healthy to eat before you sleep. But again, we're trying to develop a, 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 a substitute for the time being. In 12 weeks, we're going to be going through some strict rules, but for now, this is what I'd suggest as far as the eating part. And uh, as far as the activity part, I want you to, no, uh, we'll just go ahead and call it for winter time in Chicago. It's cold. So it's going to be limiting as far as what you can do. My suggestion is you try to incorporate some form of walking. Everybody can always throw on clothing, jackets, double socks, double pants, uh, wool stuff, gloves, and ears or earmuffs and you can get out and walk. My suggestion is you pick a path that's safe, that's carved out of the snow and maybe on a sidewalk, but you take a watch, you walk bundled up. Again, fingers, toes, and ears and nose have to be covered, but you'll walk 10 to 15 minutes out, and then at the end of 10 to 15 minutes, whether it's timer or you just notice, you turn around. Doesn't matter if you've developed a sweat, worked up a, uh, a fast heart rate, or gotten short of breath, I want you to, at 10 to 15 minutes, turn around and head back. That's usually, in hiking terms, called an up and back. I want you to get used to that. And I want you to cut it at the end of, let's say, 15 minutes at the most. 10 to 15 minutes at the most, you turn around and you head back. That'll be every day. If you can do that every day, five days a week, and you can accumulate, in addition to your usual exercise, 160 minutes a week, and that's usually more sustainable than trying to buy a lifetime fitness membership, indulge in a personal trainer, although I think exercise physiologists and personal trainers are very good as coaches, will keep you in a, in a sustainable fashion on goal to target. But if you're the, my patient, then you usually don't have excessive cash. You're probably a little constraint, budget constraint. And I, I again, would do something that's sustainable getting a pair of shoes on, double socks, double clothes, ear, nose, and toes, fingers coverage, I think that's sustainable, that's cheap. Using your local neighborhood, it's not exciting, but at least if you do plan on an up and back once a day for five days a week, and then it's up to you what you want to do on Saturdays and Sundays, then at least in the next three weeks, that would be easy to manifest, sustain, and then you'll hit goal fast. If those of you who weight train, my suggestion is it's okay to weight train. I'll put a video on my form of weight training. Whether you choose machines or free weights, if we're going to be using, uh, converting your exercise or activity routine into something that's calorie burning, I want you to go into circuit training. That means no break. Uh, I like something by Bob Guida called peripheral heart action. I think if you're ready for it and you don't have any heart disease, it'd be worth it to continue with your exercise routine, but I want you just like a wrestling team or a crew team, if you've ever been to a Division I school in the Northeast, they do exercise station after exercise station and on the buzzer or on the whistle they switch stations and go immediately into the next station until 20 minutes is finished. 20 minutes of circuit weight training continuous without a break is I think better for you. Burns more fat, gets you a little bit of a pump, it won't get you big muscle. But again in this next 12 weeks I don't want you to build more muscle because you'll add more weight to that. I just want you to take the muscle that you have, develop its mitochondria and get an endurance going. So if you're going to be weight training, switch over to circuit weight training. See my video for that. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have an exercise routine, just adopt this 15, 10 to 15 minute up and back for the next uh, three weeks, five days a week, and try to maintain it. We'll talk about adding to it further on. If you like going to the uh, your local Planet Fitness or 24-hour or Charter Fitness and doing the elliptical trainer, that's fine. Treadmill, elliptical trainer, fine if you want to get a little bit of cardio in, that's no, no problem, but I would suggest the routine walking. And I'll put a video on how to do uh, meditative hiking or meditative breathwork when you walk. 
that leads us to the last thing, thinking. Because of uh, most of us being stressed out and not being trained in any form of relaxation therapy, unless you truly go to a counselor, uh, I want you to slowly adopt some form of meditation. And, and before you turn this off, yes, meditation does help to fight cancer, does help to uh, take care of the pain of fibromyalgia. It also helps to lower postprandial glucose. So it does help in decreasing the stress response. If you remember, stress response increases cortisol, and cortisol makes us hunt. So it might not make you hunt immediately after the stressor, but if you accumulate cortisol after cortisol after cortisol event, guess what you're going to do at the end of the day? You're going to hunt for food. And even if you're thirsty, you'll still hunt for food because it's the easiest thing that you can identify with. Uh, so meditation is very important. Uh, if you just start with breath work. The activity that we'll do with the walking will be kind of combination activity and thinking. We'll slowly introduce you to other forms of meditation and relaxation, but for now, watch my video on uh, meditative walking or breath work. Uh, the final thing is what I just mentioned, water. I want you all to indulge in water. You should, be ha you should at least fi finish off a gallon at every shift. So if your shift is eight hours, I want you to finish off at least a gallon of water by the end of the shift. Now that's going to come into some problem, especially if you're doing a night shift. You don't want to be peeing all night, but know when to cut it off and know when to start uh, indulging in fluids. Uh, another common mistake is that when we're dehydrated, we think that we're actually hunting or get this th sense of hunger when actually it's supposed to be thirst. So get that out of the way. You want to be neutralizing all the possibilities for hunting later on when you're at your weakest, when you're not either with me or when you're not with your friends or when you're hungry or tired or pissed off that you just had a really bad shift. You want to eliminate all those stressors so at the end of 12 weeks we have hopefully a three pound weight loss every week until that goal weight. Now everybody's going to be a little different. Usually this is tailor-made. I don't like giving um, blanket statements for everybody but this will at least give us some education in trying to get to goal. If the final thing uh, in this first week is to introduce you to three supplements. Because most people uh, have craving, I'll usually suggest Gymnema Silvestri. Gymnema Silvestri is a, an herb, a, a root, a plant, that helps in decreasing sugar craving. Even if you don't have uh, a craving for sugar, it decreases supposedly the taste or the lure of carbohydrates. So that would be the first thing. Usually if you can find a good brand, I like Gaia, Nature's Way, um, Now Foods, uh, Source Naturals. Those are all pretty decent companies. Uh, if you can find them online or in your local herb shop. I like about 200 to 400 milligrams three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, to take care of the hunting before it comes on. In addition, I like chromium picolinate. Usually it's about 500 micrograms a day, and you can divide it up into two or three doses. And then finally, St. John's Wort. I think there's a lot of emotional baggage that comes with why we got to this point now. And whether you have uh, mild, moderate, or severe depression or anxiety, this next 12 weeks we're going to be going through some withdrawal and we're going through some changes. I think having the stability of emotional, um, uh, having emotional stability with St. John's Wort would be wise. Now you have to be careful. St. John's Wort, out of the three medicines or herbs, St. John's Wort does have some interactions when you use it with prescription medicine, so you should ask me first or ask your doctor. I like about 300 milligrams three times a day. And we start off with those three in addition to everything else I mentioned and hopefully progress on to next week.